Marmalades and gentle of the mental manan. Recently I joined this boxing association a couple friends of mine are trying to put together. Long story short, money is tight, so they are lacking in one or two tools. One of them being a boxing timer. They are getting by with a phone app, but the thing's not loud enough and well it kinda sucks. Well, pretty sure making one of them clocks will be a fun project, right? Right. So we are making one. My first thought was to go on eBay, buy a few 7 segment displays, put them all together, write a code and be done with it. But recently it came to my attention that addressable LED strips are a thing that exists. As a result we are making our very own RGB 7 segment LED displays. And due to printer size restrictions, instead of making the whole clock in one go, I had to make one display at a time, which is fine by me. Now these LED sections need to be glued in place to then have all the cables soldered together. Which is now done. A couple things to note would be the order in which these sections are connected. The data wire comes in here first, making this segment number one, then jumps here, making it segment number two, then goes around three, four, five, six and seven. Also note that not all segments are equal. These three have eight LEDs each, these two have seven and these two have nine. So to light up segment number one, the code will have to go through eight LEDs. To light up segment number two, seven LEDs. You get the rest. Now the next act will be all about fitting these opaque covers in each segment to diffuse the light, which is now also done. Hopefully we'll have at least three modes. Setup mode where we'll be able to input our preferences such as round time, rest time and interval. Work mode where the clock will decrease time from whatever round time we set before and interval mode which will behave like work mode but with the added feature of warning us when a certain amount of time has elapsed. So, if in setup mode we set our interval to say 15 seconds, then in interval mode the clock will ring every 15 seconds, but only if we are in the working period. If we are resting, then we are resting. If not all, at least most commercial units come with a piezo speaker alarm. They are cheap, and very loud, but they are not as cool as a real bell. The problem with this one is the mechanism inside which makes it sound like <coughs> crap. But maybe if we use a solenoid actuator to hit the bell with, then it should sound a lot more like a traditional boxing bell. Today is a couple days later and we not only have a rehoused bell with a solenoid actuator inside, but also a finished clock. Well, given that it is a one-off prototype, it's as finished as a prototype ever gets to be. Whatever's. Inside of it, there's a huge mess of wire, so there's really no point in showing you its insides. But in short, we have a 5 volt, 30 amp power supply powering the board and all the LED strips, a 24 volt, 1 amp power supply for the bell, and instead of an Arduino board, I went with an ESP32 board. The reason for that being, first and foremost, speed and memory, but also its Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities might come in handy in the future. Some of you might be asking how the 3 volt logic on the SP32 can control these 5 volt LED strips. And if you are, I'll leave a link in the description box to the video that taught me how to do it. Anyway, I still use the Arduino IDE to program the clock, so technically it's still an Arduino project, I think. The point in sharing this with you guys isn't just to show off the cool clock that I made. The point is to show you that you can turn your ideas into something tangible, even if you don't have a clue on how you are going to execute them. Trust me, I had no idea that I was going to use addressable LEDs, nor did I have the slightest clue on how they need to be programmed, nor did I know how to make a clock, and much less did I have any idea how the values of a clock could be passed into an animation that our eyes would perceive as numbers. You just take your idea and start building upon it one small step at a time. How do I want my displays to look like? How do I want the user interface to be? Buttons or a touch screen? How do I arrange things? Do I want a bell? Do I want a siren? How tall? How small? 
you just stack up together these little things and all of a sudden your idea became a real thing. That's what matters. Might as well let you see it doing its thing, right? So when turning it on, we get an animation just to show off a little. And here in setup mode, when these numbers are orange, we can set our round time in minutes and seconds. And if I don't touch these buttons for five seconds, it will switch to rest time like so. And again, we can set our rest time in minutes and seconds. And if I don't touch it again for five seconds, it will toggle orange and then blue and so on. Here I can set our interval time for the interval mode. I'll leave that at 20 seconds. In work mode, we get the traditional countdown style boxing clock type of thing. When we have 10 seconds remaining in the round, we get the clapper, then the round ends like like so, we get into the resting period, and then again in the 10 seconds remaining for the resting period, we get another clapper and the cycle begins once more. Rounds went up and it repeats. And in interval mode, the same countdown type of clock still applies, but now we do not get the 10 second clapper. What we do get instead, since we set our interval to 20 seconds, is a signal every 20 seconds while we are in the working period. So now we get another signal. So this will allow us to, for in instance, sprint for 20 seconds, then go slower for 20 seconds, then again and again and again. Then when this switches to the resting period, it will not ring every 20 seconds. And that's, that's our clock. And I'm quite happy with it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.